What I would like to discuss today is the notion of theoretical frames and how you may use them separately and in combination to identify and solve problems in organizations. Before we begin, I'd like to talk briefly about the value of theories. Kurt Lewin said, there is nothing more practical than a good theory. That's because theories are based on empirical studies of human behavior in organizations. Thus, what we know about human behavior is efficiently summarized and presented as theories. They may help us analyze complex relationships among people and organizations, frame action, predict outcomes, and are important tools for enhancing the effectiveness of leaders. Within the social sciences, major schools of thought have emerged, each with its own view of organizations and leadership. Each school of thought is typically associated with an era or a period of time and may go through a cycle of ascendance, dominance, challenge by other theories, and decline in importance as circumstances change. An inherent problem with studying theories along a timeline is that people often assume that concepts developed during preceding eras lose relevance. On the contrary, different theoretical perspectives may be more or less important depending on organizational conditions. Bowman and Deal consolidate major areas of organizational thought and characterize them as frames or lenses that may be used as vantage points to help bring different aspects of organizational life into sharper focus and may be used as tools for action. Each frame has its strengths and weaknesses, but when all four are mastered, they provide a comprehensive picture of what's going on in an organization. The frames that they have developed are structural, human resource, political, and symbolic. I'll review each of these briefly. The structural frame draws upon the field of sociology and emphasizes the importance of formal roles and relationships. Organizational charts are created to depict formal relationships and official communication patterns used to coordinate activities. Managers allocate responsibilities to participants, in other words, a division of labor, create rules, regulations, and policies to handle routine work, and managers make decisions when exceptions arise. When structure does not fit the situation, then managers must reorganize or restructure the organization so it's aligned with its work. The human resource frame draws upon the field of social psychology and is based on the premise that organizations are inhabited by individuals who have needs, feelings, and dispositions, as well as the capacity to learn and defend established attitudes and beliefs. This frame advances the notion that the key to effectiveness is to tailor organizations to meet the needs of people while getting the job done. Chester Barnard, a neo-structuralist who wrote in the late 1940s, noted that successful organizations meet the needs of both the organization and its workers. The political frame draws on the field of political science and views organizations as arenas in which different interest groups compete for power and scarce resources. Thus, politics is about the distribution of resources. In other words, who gets what, when, and how. Conflict is a normative part of organizational life because individuals and groups have different needs, perspectives, and values. Coalitions form around specific interests, and bargaining, negotiating, coercion, and compromise are part of everyday organizational life. Many problems arise because power is either concentrated in the wrong places in an organization or so dispersed that nothing gets done. Solutions require political acumen and skill. This frame emphasizes that organizations are driven and understood more by observing rituals, ceremonies, stories, heroes, and myths than by rules, regulations, policies, and managerial authority. Organizations are viewed as theater in which actors play out their roles to affirm their leadership, purposes of the organization, its direction, and interpret meaning of events for internal and external audiences. Problems arise when actors play their roles badly, symbols lose their meaning, and when rituals and ceremonies lose their importance. 
Effective leaders can use stories, symbols, and myths to convey meaning and affirm the purposes of the organization as well as the value of its members in achieving commonly held goals. The notion of conceptual pluralism is important to understanding the value of multiple theoretical perspectives. For example, Akira Kurosawa's film Rashomon tells the story of medieval Japan as seen through the eyes of four witnesses. Each person viewed the same event, however their background and experience influenced what they saw. No single story was the truth, yet it was their truth. Each individual's account was not enough to make the event understandable, but taken together they tell what actually happened. Thus viewing events in an organization using several perspectives, in other words reframing, increases a leader's effectiveness. Being able to do this is more like an artist or a filmmaker than a mechanic. Artists reframe the world so others can see new possibilities. In this regard, understanding an organization holistically requires you to see it from multiple perspectives, much like you would do walking around a sculpture in a museum. The value of reframing is to determine what is happening in complex organizations. To do this, you need more powerful perspectives, comprehensive approaches, and greater flexibility in using them. The field of organizational theory is not fragmented. It's pluralistic and provides numerous lenses for viewing organizations. Bowman and Deal organized theories into four frames that we just reviewed. Each frame or lens focuses on a particular dimension of an organization's life that enhances understanding. Each has its strengths as well as its blind spots. But when you shift from one frame to another, and then use them in combination, you gain a powerful understanding of what is happening and thus gain greater leverage in solving problems. The EDL 700 and 701 courses use the notion of frames to organize the study of theories. Organizing course content in this manner has been very beneficial for students and enabled them to master the art of reframing.